Hi everyone, let's talk about Valley of the Alchemists, which again is on Kickstarter and you can click the link in the description to go and check out their campaign page. Uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. It's definitely, you know, a quicker game uh, on the lighter side, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's It's got the... Uh, it's got the collection of the ingredients is very nice. I like that everybody's got their own, you know, personal things and you're still restricted to how many things you can have, but it doesn't really rely on what the other players are doing. The competition is in, you know, getting to the elixirs first and maybe other players spotting what you're doing and they're going to, they've got those, uh, they've got those decoctions ready already. So they are going to be able to snatch them away from you, but maybe that's just going to clog up their chest and not get, you know, the perfect line that you need because Generating those bonus points is, you know, a really, really big source of points in this game. And it can be very important knowing when to save your, you know, your powers. They're, they're very, very useful to have, but you only got four and you go through them really, really quickly. And that's it. One use for the whole game. So, you know, planning that out is very important as well. You never quite know as well what the what cards are going to come out in the deck. You know, you only use 35 out of, it's a bit more than half of the deck in a two player game. So there is some variance in that, but it's kind of up to you to not put all your eggs in one basket, you know, that you you need all, you know, level one circular ones that all have yellow in them. It's probably not going to happen, but if you can grab maybe some of these uh, dual colored ones or, you know, just let go of things like the level matching, because that's only the three point bonus. You know, the others are more important than that. If you can get them all great, but, you know, you probably won't be able to. Another thing is, you know, building, ramping up throughout the game is really good. You start really, really weak. Well, not weak. You, you can only get, you know, one of each ingredient apart from anything you might have leveled up with your two skill points at the start of the game. But as you, you know, that factors into the decision of the elixirs that you can get as well, which level ups it's going to give you. And are those, you know, are getting skill points in that going to help you with the other potions that are out there? You know, if, if there are tons of blues out there, you might not want to go for one straight away. You might want to go for a couple of easier potions that give you the level ups in blue so that when you come to collect the ingredients, you can get loads in one go. And then when it comes to the, you know, making mixing the decoctions or, you know, making the elixirs themselves, if you can build up a huge amount of ingredients, which you are limited to by the amount that you can have at any one time, if you can build up a big amount though, you can do it all with one action. And that's where it starts, you know, that's where it really starts ramping up when you can start making, you know, maybe six decoctions at a time, because that's the most water you can have. So that's the most you could ever make. And then trying to use all of that to just grab as much of this as you can, Try and arrange it in a way that works on your chest. That's really nice as well. You have got the opportunity to rearrange it if you want. It's it's kind of a waste of an action if you didn't uh, plan it right or maybe you didn't know that particular potion was going to come out. But uh, yeah, you're not stuck in there. But arranging it in the chest is a nice little touch. And the selling of the elixirs is a really nice thing as well because yeah, it it's, it factors into everything. The, the timing of when you take the elixirs, which which things you're going to wait for, are you going to wait to try and match everything perfectly up, or do you just want to go really quickly and just match shapes and not bother about anything else, just try and go as quickly as you can, maybe just keep doing level ones that are worth fewer points, but and they're not going to level you up as fast as well, that's kind of the restriction of that, but you know, if you sort the playthrough, it didn't really help me that much. Oh, just a couple of things, I did think when we were playing it that the display of 10 potions, it's very, very easy in a two-player game at least, to kind of you know, completely go your own way. And we didn't really ever come across that, oh, I really wanted that. We were kind of going in our own direction and it didn't really matter that much. You know, I, th I thought at first, you know, if you reduced the the display on there, it would drive competition a little bit more. But I did speak to the developers about that. And then you've got to kind of think about the randomness of what comes out. It's nice to have a bigger display because it's more likely that something useful to you is going to be out. Whereas as soon as you start, you start shrinking that, it's, it's less likely. And so it's probably best off uh, just how it is at the moment. But yeah, that is one little thing that only really concerns you if you're playing uh, mainly with two players like I do. But other than that, I think it's been a really, really enjoyable game and I've definitely enjoyed my time with it. Uh, but yeah, you can check out the Kickstarter page. It's in the description and see if it would be one for you or check out the playthrough. But that's uh, Valley of Alchemists. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.